Welcome back to the Fear and Beer Podcast, where we discuss all things Halloween horror nights, horror movies, and just a little bit of beer. I'm Nick. And I'm Seamus. Like scary movies. Uh Uh-huh. Here's Johnny. It's alive. It's alive. It's alive. You miss me. Aren't you drinking? I never drink. Why? Before we get into tonight's episode, we want to remind all of those listening on Apple Podcasts to drop us a five-star review. It helps us grow as a podcast and build our audience. If you're listening on Spotify or any other platform, follow us, and don't forget to share with friends and family who might have a little bit of the strange in them as well. And while you're on those socials, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, be sure to find us, Fear and Beer Pod. Give us a like, share, and you can always message us. We'd love to interact with all you guys. Day two. Here we are. Almost forgot our intro again. What day is it? This is going to be our second day of our seven-day-long stretch of episodes. Okay, so whatever day that is, this will be. Day you're listening to it. This should be Saturday, August twenty-seventh, as long as all these episodes go according to plan. Uh, and today we're doing a sort of killer review. Um, Halloween, nineteen seventy-eight. Should be playing right above me. Um, this won't be like an exact killer review. Um, we, everyone's seen this movie, but it was the last IP of the houses that we haven't discussed yet. So I wanted to kind of dive into it. Um, some facts from the movie. We'll, we'll talk about certain scenes, and then we'll kind of go into the house and what we, uh, we want to see. But, of course, if you're watching on YouTube, um, if you're just listening, you don't know this yet. But with us is close friend, my buddy, Eric Diaz. How are we doing, everybody? Halloween lover, aficionado. Enthusiast. <laughs> Michael Myers fan stan yeah um so yeah we figured we'd bring some people in for this week make it fun this is going to be a uh, a week leading up to the event and hopefully we're giving you some content every day to uh break those uh monotonous days up um but i guess we should get into some beers because we got a couple different ones we don't have to go too in depth because they're pretty basic and i'm still just trying to empty out my fridge of all the leftover random shit that i have sticking around so i got guinness the only reason I grabbed this is because it is the darkest beer, the devil's beer. Hey, that's right. <laughs> so I figured get a nice dark beer for this one. You got Elysian, I think Elysian Puncacino Coffee Pumpkin Ale All right. from Seattle, Washington. And I'm not going to lie to you, we're talking about clearing out fridges. This was supposed to be enjoyed by May 7th. 2021. Oh, <laughs> so we're doing all right. Evil we're, never dies. We'll test that one out. Age never heard a beer. That's for it's sure. That's what I said. Uh, and then I guess I'm stealing another one of Nick's. This one's called Gordon's Gone Wild. And actually, I haven't had it before. So nice. there is a good chance that I haven't had this on the podcast, obviously. So I'm excited to try it. It's a pumpkin beer. Getting close to the uh, event. So we'll have to give it a shot. Seems like it's just a traditional yam pumpkin style ale, which is what you get with pumpkin head or other ones of the same. So we'll give this one a chance. And it's got graham cracker in it, so I'm interested to see yeah, what it is. Yeah, mine says thing. that too. I got graham cracker, coffee, and cinnamon nuts. Yeah. All right. I got uh, St. James Gate Double in Ireland. So I'm working with that tonight. It's not like we haven't had Guinness before <laughs> on, the, I know. on the podcast. Just have too many of them kicking around in my uh, in my fridge, so I gotta gotta get rid of them. Oh, gotta love that little nitro ball. And yes, this is how you pour the Guinness into a can. Just straight up and let it come on down. To be enjoyed in time. Yeah, exactly. You gotta gotta pump it in there, let it settle. So obviously, I'm sure you've all seen Halloween 1978, but a little little quick bio. Fifteen years after murdering his sister on Halloween night in 1963, Michael Myers escapes from a mental hospital and returns to the small field of the small town of Haddonfield, Illinois, to kill again. Uh, directed, of course, by John Carpenter, written by John Carpenter and Deborah Hill. Uh, they definitely split duties on this. From what I heard, Deborah Hill really did the basis of it, wrote a lot of lorry stuff, and then Carpenter came through and did like a punch up with all the you know the stories of the evil and, and the Michael Myers aspect of things. Um, but it was like a true split there. There's a reason why the dialogue between the teenagers seemed so real, seemed so you know of the time because. Deborah Hill was basically a teenager when she wrote mm-hmm. this movie, so yeah, um, you can tell that it wasn't just a Carpenter, you know, movie. He was definitely the 
driver of it, but he had a lot of help from multiple avenues. Um, but you don't see a lot of movies. That's a lot of you movies. don't. So good. Yeah, no. Yeah. The different aspects, different dialect, like you said. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was a cool thing. A lot of the cast and crew um, had just known each other forever. Tommy Lee Wallace had known Carpenter throughout school. Uh, Nick Castle, who portrays the shape in most scenes, um, they had all worked together on his previous project as well, which was just like a low budget. Um, it's called Dark Star. Um, and I think it was I think it was made or, or it grossed like 60000 but that was like his right out of college directorial debut. Um, and that's kind of the film that, Introduced him into the guy, um, Erwin Yablons, if I'm saying that correctly. Yeah, Yablons. Yablons, who was Yablons. pretty much, he worked for w, uh, WB um, as a like promoter, I guess. He was the one that kind of got the reels and the, all the, the movies and distributed them all. So for that, and then over time, his wife had told him that he should be making the movies. Uh, so he just decided to. So he started his own little production company. And then was looking for a project and stumbled upon John Carpenter, um, and that's where they kind of kind of took off from there. They started with he also made the Siege, which later turned out to be Assault on Precinct Thirteen. Correct. Yep. And that's what really got the attention of people in Hollywood. So he was kind of on on an uptick from there. Um, that was a classic movie too. That's a great yeah. film. And again, a lot of the same people that worked on Halloween worked on this movie, so it was always just portrayed as a tight knit, young, hungry, poor production, which is fun and usually doesn't turn out as well as this. Because sometimes you get Halloween, sometimes you get Thanksgiving. There's really not many in betweens there. Yeah, I mean, you can tell that this movie, although it was low budget, it was they were taking taking it serious. And I think a lot of movies that are low budget. They at least nowadays they kind of go for that B movie schlock sticky type shit because it's easier and you can get away with more. Mm-hmm. Um, I think if you try to take yourself too seriously and it doesn't work out right, that's when you run into problems. It's when you run into issues. So it, you know, for the time this movie obviously was... they, they started a recipe that they didn't think would be successful. Exactly. I mean, I'm pretty sure John Carpenter says himself in a lot of interviews that he's had that it's like I didn't expect this movie to be anything. I thought it was just an easy way to. Yeah. You know, make myself make my way into Hollywood and think it would, you know, last for a year and no one will remember it. And obviously, now, 40 years later, it's still Mm -hmm. one of the biggest Halloween movies, horror movies, you know, ever ever made. So, Mm -hmm. and then the um, when they first met, uh, John and Erwin, John said he wanted ten thousand dollars to write, direct, and he wanted his name above the film, which for like a young director is not something that's too usual. Um, you don't but the, typically ask that of your producer. Yeah, no, especially when you're about that too. You yeah. really wanted that. Especially when you're just starting out. Um, but he said that if he can make this movie for three hundred thousand dollars, then he can have whatever he wants. And of course, he did that, which is crazy when you start breaking down some of the budget. Because so three hundred thousand dollars to make it, ten thousand was going to John. They spent seventy thousand dollars on the Panaglide, which at the time it's just a, it's a steady cam. It's very you know usual now but back then this was only i think the second feature to ever use one so it was a a brand new technology and seventy thousand dollars of their budget went to that another twenty thousand dollars was paid to donald pleasance who was only on set for five days right he shot all of his stuff in five days which i'm sure we'll get to a couple his uh, a couple of his parts you in a moment. Secondary choice of that too, right? And he, yeah. yeah, they wanted Christopher Lee for it. Yep, they did. They I, I did see they wanted Christopher Lee, and then he had seen him in some. I forget, I wrote it down, but he was in one of these one of the western movies, um, and he stood out. And then Donald Pleasant didn't really understand his character. He's just like, I don't get why I'm here. I don't get what is going on. And he's ha- frustrated. And you can actually some of the scenes where he looks frustrated. That's not acting. He's actually frustrated yeah. with right. the way the movie's coming. It's along. all young young people <laughs> just doing stuff out of order, and which is a, a you know a, a pretty common practice, yeah. but. For all rookies, you know, it's, you it's gotta, frustrating. you got to think that at the time, Donald Pleasance was a renowned British stage actor. <laughs> mm-hmm. He's been in like 007. tons of movies. It's, yeah, he was in 007, but he was in a ton of productions and a ton of movies that were like big-time Hollywood at the time. And he comes into this set with a whole bunch of kids fresh <laughs> yeah. out of fucking college making a three hundred thousand dollar horror movie they're like wait what? he probably he's like how did i end up doing this and they probably like you know they offered him like what do you say 20 grand or whatever to yep. be in this movie five so days. 20 grand in the late 70s is a lot of money yeah. so he said For that five days. yeah right. and he said he need he said the reason why he took it was he needed 
alimony money for because his daughter was in England playing that like, probably added sports to the frustration or something. In some of the scenes yep. so. um, <laughs> obviously one of the biggest scenes is um, the the monologue which I think is is coming up in this part um, he had drunk about two bottles of wine the night that that day before this and was just plastered and everyone was so nervous about like is he gonna be able to do it is he gonna be able to... and then a true professional pulled it. pulled it out because he was apparently on set incoherent and he got into a big argument with Carpenter and kind of embarrassed him in front of the crew and Carpenter kind of put him in his place a little bit. Uh, another thing right here too, I think coming up uh, shortly is another little fun fact too, is in this part where the hand comes down and smashes the window, you can actually see the wrench on the guy's hand because they couldn't figure out how to break the glass. So they just taped it over with paint covered flesh so yeah, it just passed. But the hand that slams down, if you do freeze frame it, you can see a little wrench. So maybe in the house we'll see a little nod to that. That'd be, one of, the that'd classic, be fun. one of the best horror movies and one of the most movies with the most bloopers mm-hmm. that made it to the final cut. There's a lot. There's a lot of blunders in there. Oh, that's there for sure. Right there. Yep. Yep. So you can you can see it. Obviously up there you can't see it as well. But if you watch the movie, you can you can definitely see this one. But um, back to kind of the first stages, I guess, like this. The the name of Michael Myers, I guess what we can do with that. Um, so that started before this movie. That started with Assault on Precinct 13. Yeah, I was going to say that. Yeah. So the, they put it out, Assault on Precinct 13, and it really wasn't picking up steam. Um, Irwin was the one that like really loved it. Um, he cut the trailer for it. He distributed it. Um, and he's the one that changed the name from The Siege to Assault on Precinct 13. And... Like I said, it fizzled out, and then he got a call from a Michael Myers in the UK, a man who wanted to put it into the London Film Festival. Right. Um, and it won first place, and it kind of became a London cinema, UK cinema darling for a while. Um, so years later, whenever they start making Halloween, they chose that name, and the guy felt like he was due some money. And <laughs> I don't think he ever got any money for that. Speaking of the Michael Myers name, you know the actor Michael, Mike Myers? Mm-hmm. He hates being called Mike. He's only called Mike because he can't be called Michael Myers. He hated the comparison growing up. I recently found that out. <laughs> they only called him Mike Myers because he didn't want to be known as the other Michael Myers. <laughs> I, could see, I could see that getting aggravating. Um, and then upon developing this, you know, there's two stories. One story says that this movie was originally supposed to be called The Babysitter Murders. And then Irwin, the one that said that he kind of conceptualized this idea disputes that says no it was never called that but i think there's a lot of evidence pointing to the contrary um but yeah it was supposed to be called the babysit murders and then because of budgets um they decided that this has to take place in like one day not spread out over days and different sets and all this stuff so they compacted it um into on halloween night so not too much of an obvious choice there just picking halloween as the name but um they did it like that. Shows how great Carpenter is and how good Irwin is with titles. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> and they did it. It stuck. Um, this movie was sort of conceptualized through Irwin, who did the basis of, like, oh, what if there's somebody getting terrorized and Halloween, stuff like that. But apparently this story was also taken um, from Carpenter in the past, who he had an experience in college. He was touring a psychiatric hospital, um, and he met a child who just stared at him quote unquote with the look of evil and it terrified yeah, me. Yeah, scared the hell out of So <laughs> that was some some other like little backstory of where this the actual story came from. Um but they wanted to really play with theater of the mind. Um they didn't want to have a typical seventies horror exorcism or exorcist, Texas right. chainsaw, very little blood because yeah, they didn't want go granted they didn't have the budget for the gore. Yeah, right. They, yeah. <laughs> they wouldn't have been they able didn't to pull want it off. To go for the gore is what they said. Right. Mm. They wanted it almost not to pay tribute to Psycho, which another fun connection with Jamie Lee Curtis there as to how she got hired. They didn't want it to, but it did. But they wanted to like play with that Hitchcockian theater of the mind. Because was that the first point of view? Was it Psycho? Because I know Halloween was either the second or the third to use that kind of camera. That intro. I'm not sure if Psycho was the first. I don't know if it was the first, but it was obviously one of the inspirations yeah, that they for took that whole, from it. Yeah. So mm-hmm. it's like, they can say all they want. They weren't inspired necessarily by that movie, but they were. Yeah. I mean, you don't hire Jamie Lee Curtis <laughs> for no reason. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we weren't inspired or anything. It had nothing to do with, you know, Psycho. But yeah. Her mother's most, like, famous scene ever. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that's how she got hired. I mean, they, they originally, when they hired her, they weren't really impressed. 
And then they found out who her parents were. Yeah, she almost didn't get the role. Yep. Correct. And then the funny, another like funny little snippet of factoid or whatever you want to call it from a future movie in the series, Halloween H two O. She actually, her mother Jamie Lee is actually, or whatever her name is, is it Jamie Lee or Janet Lee? Janet Lee, excuse mm. me, Janet Lee is actually in Halloween H two O for a scene, and she's playing Laurie Strode's adoptive, adoptive. mother, I guess. Um, was that the opening scene? Not the opening scene, well, but close to that the intro. Oh, yeah. The old lady that talks got, to her. Gotcha, gotcha. So that's actually Janet Lee. So it's a nice little tie in to. Love call. To go back to that <laughs> callback, I guess, in, in a way. So that's kind of funny that you, you don't really think about it until you, until you read, a, read, a, read about it. Yeah. Because, I mean, if people have seen it that movie at that time, but we didn't even realize who it was. Yeah. Um, and talking, like we said, Michael Myers, the name was taken from. Laurie Strode, the name, is actually one of John Carpenter's ex-girlfriends, which I thought was funny that he wrote it with his current girlfriend. It makes sense. Deborah Hill. And, yeah, I'm just going to plug in an old ex's name here. It's the lead. Um, so I, I was looking through the financing, too, as well, because this was like a a massive successful hit with the box office. You know, when, yeah, it, insane. when it was released... Um, it was slow. It was a small, slow building machine. So what Irwin did, and I know we're jumping around a lot, but after production, once they wrapped this film, Irwin self-distributed it himself because no major studios wanted to take a chance on a slasher, a horror. It's not you know really financially successful in in most instances. Of course, they bought that time. Yeah, that the di- you know the business was dying in the late seventies. The the industry was going down. Um, so Irwin invited a bunch of you know, studio execs to come check out the first screening, and none of them showed up. It was all college kids, teenagers. <laughs> um, so they held it. They kept it there. They hold, opened up in like Kansas City, Missouri, um, and the ticket sales were okay. And then the next day, they were double. And then the next day after that, they were double again. So his plan was to continue bringing it to small towns, and if it did poorly, he could just bury it because no one's going to know about it. And if it's successful, you can kind of use that as momentum to get into the big cities. So eventually they did get into Chicago. Um, and that's where they started receiving reviews of like Roger Ebert and stuff like that. And they're getting positive reviews. And it was still like, okay. And it kind of simmered down. And then come Halloween again, 1970, or 1979, Halloween comes, they put it back in theaters and it does even better. And that's where it keeps continuing in 80. And then in 81, we got Halloween too. Right. So that's how, like, the, the, the word of introduction. Mouth got huge over the years. Yep. And it's crazy in that day and age, too, because word of mouth was truly word, word of, mouth. of mouth. It wasn't, I'm going to text this person, I'm going to put a tweet out, I'm going to Instagram, hashtag, nothing. It was just newspapers and your friends talking. It's just right. how this thing snowballed into what it is today. Um, but from a financial standpoint, $300,000 was the budget. And then, obviously, with inflation, stuff changes. But back then, budgets were still not too not too low in that sense um jaws 2 was 20 million dollars the whiz was 24 million dollars and superman the movie was made for 55 million dollars so back then they were still doing high budget productions um and this from a, a percentage standpoint just just blew all these out of the water yeah well considering that 20 million today would be low budget yeah ridiculously low budget considered low budget so Ain't that sad? Twenty million, not money, <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, this shoot the whole day was only twenty days. I think we mentioned that earlier, and then that opening sequence, that was like they did that on the very last it was day. Filled last. Yeah. That was the last thing because they dressed that house up. It was all beat up inside, and they had to dress up just mm-hmm. the path of the, the camera, so yep. it looked like it was a new house. Yeah, and this was they, that's why they filmed it last because this was an abandoned house. Right. So they only painted it fresh for that last shoot day, um, and the Panaglide, the camera that they were using for that whole thing, could only hold about like four to five minutes of footage. So they added those little moments. So the moment when Michael reaches down, puts the mask on, and covers the. They did that so they could have a cut without it looking right. like a jump cut. So even though it is like a continuous one take, it's really not. They well, right. they broke it up. Just, right. Yeah, they designed it that way too. And it's funny too, the, the kid that plays Michael at the end, the young Michael, was only there for one day. So the hands you see, like reaching out for stuff, is actually uh, Deborah Hill's hands. Right. Huh. So if you ever notice that the fingernails are all like manicured yeah. and stuff like that, it's like 
This doesn't look like a little boy's hand. It's it's not. Well, it's it's the same idea. It's like when in in a different in a different franchise in Friday the Thirteenth in the first one, mm -hmm. when uh, I forget the lead's name, but when she chops off Jason's mother's head, oh yeah, you can actually see when she's falling off, falling down without her head on. There's arm hair. Oh yeah, because it's actually Tom Savini's it... arms <laughs> playing the dead mother. Yeah, so they can get the shot. Um. So I guess talking about the creation too, the you know talking about that going into props and stuff like that, the whole Michael Myers mask hunt. Um, well, that's a famous so, story. <laughs> they, they spent more time looking for the mask than shooting the movie. Yeah, they could not find a mask. It took them a while, and then they finally they sent Tommy Lee Wallace out, who was like just a jack of all trades. He was, co you know, not really costume because nobody had costume. They provided their own costumes, but he did yeah. all the you know, like production design and stuff like that. He was tasked to go find a mask. So he went down to a store. Um, he found two masks. Um, it was a Emmett Kelly sad clown mask, mm -hmm. which like red which hair. Would have been petrifying. Yep. And they and then they tested it. They said it was really weird and creepy and good. But then the other mask, obviously, was Captain Kirk. Star Trek was a big thing then. So what he did when he played with the mask, he brought it home. He opened the eyelids up, shaved the eyebrows, shaved the sideburns, painted the face, painted the hair. Um, and then when they tested it, they were just like, oh shit, this yep. is, that's it. That's, that's what we're going for. Cause in the script, it never, doesn't have much of a description. It just has a blank face. And that was just what he went for. Just a white blank face. Um, cause he's always referred to as just the shape, the shape. not a very little mention of Michael Myers other than dialogue. It's hard to imagine this franchise with Michael as a, as as a, a clown, clown mask. Yeah. It's, it's just hard to imagine. And I don't know if you'd have, what, 12 movies now at this point? If it wasn't, if it didn't work out just in that way. Because what's nice about the blank white mask is that you can kind of project anything on that. And that's kind of what made it so popular, made mm -hmm. it so uh, important to the series, is that like he really is just anybody. You never see Michael yeah. with his mask on. No, I mean, you do in a way, but like in certain ways, but like... It's 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 so quick that you know you just you only ever think of what's behind those eyes and you, you just like like they said in the movie there isn't anything behind it that's evil behind those opening eyes opening so, them up was a smart idea yeah yeah right because it it's, doesn't I mean you have to almost tell someone it's William Shatner and they yeah. can kind of see but really Wallace did such a good job of making it just different different that it worked. Yeah. You know why they went with white too? Because they didn't have a budget for lights. Yeah. Yeah. The reason the movie's so dark, they didn't have money for lights. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yep. So yeah. they wanted the, the mask to be seen in the darkness. It wasn't even meant to right. be. Right, and it works. <laughs> and, and, it, and, it, and it it's such a good trick too. Like it's one of those accidental tricks. Yeah. Like in the scene where he comes in behind Lori near the end of it and he just kind of appears. Mm -hmm. Like that was all just because, like you said, they had no lights. Yeah. They, it was just literally they had one the way light they on shot a, it. They had one light on a dimmer, and right. that's what it was. There's right. like, it's just all the right, we got to paint it with. white enough that we can see it in the dark. Yep. Right. And that's just that's what you get with like these smart people like Young Carpenter people. that are adaptable and like work with what they got. Oh, when you're told you got three hundred grand, make a movie. Yeah, I mean, you the, think that three hundred thousand dollars is a lot of money, but when it comes to making a movie, and it's like you could give any good director producer that budget and tell them to do it like a big time one and they would have no idea right but you take a bunch of poor college kids no, they'll find your, a way I think this I think, is your chance yeah. to make it they, yeah. they know how to do that i think part of it does show the genius of men or men and women like you know john carpenter deborah hill or are you talking like Wes craven sean mm -hmm. cunningham like those dudes that you know tom savini the guys that like can take a budget you give them and rather than say i need more money i can't do what i want to do with more money they find ways to do it mm -hmm. with what they have, and they have the ability and the, 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 the real, like, education. Not only education, because I, I think there's a lot of things that, like, they're almost like pra what they call them practical effects, I guess, is it's very practical, and they have to almost think about how can we make this work. You know, they don't teach you all these tricks in film no, school. It's got to figure I mean, it now out. Now they probably do. Now yeah. they look at it and they go, let's study how they did it then, and you learn some of these. Right, you learn some of these tricks now, but, like, back then. I don't think USC or UCLA Film School was teaching these guys how to do all these little tiny tricks. Cheap and tricks, stuff. yeah. No. And gags and stuff. I think it wasn't this particular movie, but I'm trying to think what movie it was. Or maybe it was this one. There were was, was certain things where, you know, they got a lot of these ideas from old school magicians, even. 
Like a lot of the things they heard about, like old school, you know, trick of the mind, like you were saying, slide or like sleight of hand type stuff, um, and do that on film, to do that on camera, and make it work in a, in a, in a movie, in a, in, a, in a way to make a movie. So I think that's really cool how they kind of learned some of those things from even beyond old time Hollywood. Mm-hmm. to kind of come up with some of these things yeah um so getting into michael myers too there was a handful of people that played him in this but it was mostly nick castle nick castle was the who main. was just a friend and was just, just was trying to hang dude. out <laughs> hanging out <laughs> he man. was just hanging out he he called john and was just like hey i'm just gonna come hang out and next thing you know they're like hey put this on go stand there go stand behind the bush go stand by the laundry go stand over here right and that's all he did and then they they made a whole thing in the in the they, they tried to almost create this story. Maybe they did, maybe they didn't, about how Nick Castle's father was like a dancer. So he had like a really natural gait, like a walking he gait. Have, and he, he may have. But, but like, I think he just happened to be the right guy at the right it, time. It was like yeah. doing nothing. And it's cool because like any of those aspiring filmmakers or actors out there that might that might listen to us, maybe you want to be an actor one day, like it's, it's just amazing to think about how like back then you could literally just show up to a set because you're friends with the director. Yeah. And he's like, hey, Put this mask on. Now you're in a movie and you're you're known worldwide yeah, as just playing turn, Michael Myers. Turn it's, your head. It's crazy. turn your head this way. And I was like, I mean, you don't have a speaking part. You don't, you don't have no. facial expressions. You don't have to worry about anything. You're good. You, you just know the one thing that came from Castle, the when Michael sat up. Yes. Uh, he he felt that Michael wouldn't roll over to stand up with help. He would just sit up. Yeah, yeah. he wouldn't need help to yep. get up. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah, the yeah. Undertaker. Yeah, like, like, rising up. <laughs> he said, I don't think Michael would turn and lift himself up. He would just get up. But the thing yep. is, it's crazy too, is like if you're Nick Castle, think about it. Like, not only did you help start a franchise, but you also helped inspire so many other movies. Like you wouldn't have Jason. If it wasn't oh, for Michael it was Myers. a direct rip You wouldn't yeah. have yeah. Ghostface if it yeah. wasn't for Michael Myers. Sleepaway Camp. So it's like or, you wouldn't um, have any of those uh, B. Silent those, Night, those, Deadly yeah, Night. All those like the slasher, slasher movies that kind of came after this one. You wouldn't have anything from that. And to think about Maniac it, Cop. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> a white masked cop. That's yeah. Right. <laughs> and just and just to think that like that all came from like you said, just some dude who just showed up one day. It was like, hey, I want to watch you make a movie. Do you want to be in the movie? Yeah. Sure. Oh, why fuck not? It. Why not? Fuck it. Um, Love it. But yeah, so that was the kind of production they were running. Obviously, too, this movie was not filled in a Haddonfield, Illinois, which no, it was filmed in California, in <laughs> California in the springtime. So many bloopers. That's yep. what I love. <laughs> so you do see some palm, palm trees. trees. You see some trees that are fully green. Yep. Um, so they did have to find. They had three pumpkins on set. Yep. That was it. They did. They had to make. They had to make three pumpkins last. So that was time, it. Right? So and they had the leaves too. So the leaves. Yep. They so had the to, leaves aren't in, in every scene. Right. Yep. Right. Not right. In every scene. So they had like a team of. I think I don't know if they were kids or they had. They had. They had a team of people that their whole job was to just round up the leaves and put them back in bags so they can bring them to the next. Scene. They reused them. They painted them too. <laughs> yeah. They had to buy leaves, plastic leaves, and paint them. Right. Um, but then the pumpkin. So one was on the nightstand in one of the bedrooms. Yep. The other one was the one that they had carved with Lori. Right. And then the third one was, was the, the one, one that, that fell. That Donnie, which, uh, no, Donnie. No, Tommy. 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 Um, fell. And that was a one take. Obviously, you can't do that twice. Right. But they did find other South American gourds and painted them orange. So those are Correct. some background ones yeah. that are like far enough away Makes that you sense. wouldn't tell. Yeah, it was filmed in April, too. Wasn't no one yeah. Yeah, spring yeah, 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 which yeah, is yeah, crazy because yeah. yeah. they filmed it in the spring and then released in the fall. Right. It was a the 20 day year. shoot. Yeah. They cut and it they all together. It, like, immediately. It they was so fast. Pieced it all together. Carpenter did all of the music in three days. Mm-hmm. And the music was done after the movie. Yeah. Yep. yep. They was... did showings of the movie without the music. And then a lot of people were like, I don't get it. It's, it's not scary. scary. Yeah. Right. It just but the minute they put sound the sound can make Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's the score that. It's how simple that score is, too. He was playing on the on his keyboard at the time. He didn't know what to do. He just. He was fidgety. Like if you're playing with a beer and you're playing with your label. Scratching it, he was just playing. Yeah, yeah. And kept on hitting one note, and I was like, "That sounds kind of." Yeah, that sounds creepy. And he just <laughs> and keeps working on it, working on it, and like just That's again, incredible. Just another the thing genius. that is so simple, but like you said, "incredible" is a great word for it. It's just how incredible these things come together to make such a cl- like. It's such a just like iconic. I keep saying iconic, but it's it's the right word for it. It is. You, it, you, you exactly think of Halloween, you think of Michael Myers in the mask. And you think of the doo 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 doo. You just think of that song, and it just gets stuck in your head. And everybody, anybody who's anybody who ever played an instrument in their lives knows how to play that song on piano, yeah. um, just because you all learn it as kids. Because you remember it from the movie, and it's just it's just crazy how it seemed like everything. All these it's disparate pieces just kind of came together 
to make a hole that has lasted, like I said before, 40 plus years. Yeah, and this movie, and like the the score too, like they never do the same note. Like after that, they just, they always jump up. Yeah, right. They never do the same. Right, he just, he go, he goes up an octave every, 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 um, um, and, and that's how they originally met too. I think like him and Tommy Lee in, uh, in college were in a band and that's kind of like how they, or, or Carpenter that, yeah. was in a band and Tommy Lee was like, um, Oh man, all the girls are talking to him. So then he just kind of like, yeah, 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 yeah. scooted in, and then they, lo and behold, we get the the two thirds fix, yeah, whatever. I'm just, just going to throw this company. out there. Tommy Lee Wallace directed our favorite movie in the in the series. Oh, one of my favorite movies. In the series. Resurrection. No, <laughs> no, no. Hey, Halloween listen, Three. Russell yeah. Rhymes is a godsend <laughs> to the horror and community. Okay, hey, hey, I low key like that movie, so I don't talk shit. Oh, it's shit. great. Kung but Fu. no, he directed he directed <laughs> Halloween three. So come on, we're talking about Tommy Lee Wallace, and we're not doing a house about Halloween three. Uh, one day, every episode, I'm going to say it. Until we <laughs> we'll it, keep so bringing that. it up every time. We'll bring it up every time. Um, and again, like we mentioned, very little blood. Only blood shown was in that little intro. Was yeah, when he was stabbing his sister. Very almost not. There's almost no that, gore. That maybe a little blood when he stabbed Lori. He like goes yeah, through the shirt. Yeah, there's a trick, yeah. but that's about it. Yeah. And everyone remembers this movie for being super gory. Like if you saw it once, it's as because kid, you think you theater think, of the mind. You, right, exactly, and like you think about it being so gory, and it doesn't help that you know obviously all the movies that came after it were basically gore fests. Yeah, you know, you think about Halloween. They started this whole, this whole genre of horror movie, and you think, well, it must have been really bloody, but it really wasn't. Like, this, I think one of the, for me, the, the one of the things that stuck in my mind, you know, from watching it as a kid and then growing up with it, is that I always thought that when he stabs the boyfriend and hangs him up on the wall, that when his legs drop, his feet drop, I always thought there was blood dripping down his toe, but there isn't. <laughs> but, but 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 my mind told you see, myself. Yeah. That there was. And I always thought that there was, but there wasn't. And so, that yeah, was a great right. scene. Just like I said, the head tilt, the exam. Yeah, yeah, movie. yeah. And I'm sure that like he'll, he'll get into it, but like, the kills in this movie, too. Oh. All of them are inventful. Or, or inventful. In, I'm trying to think of the word. I'm trying to, uh, they were very inventive, I think is the word I'm thinking of. Um, there isn't like anything like super samey. It wasn't all like the same type of stuff. Like Every time it was different. Um, and like they used different tricks with it. And, like I, talking about that one particularly, just the idea of him stabbing him through the chest and he just hangs there, I think is so cool. And like how many people have taken that? Yeah, but how many and movies used, have done and that type of this, that? Yeah, and saved that's done that same thing. So. Yeah, know. and that was um, when he was like directing Nick Castle. He's like, I don't get it. And then he like saw the dailies and was like. I get it. He's like admiring his work now. Like he's yeah okay. Like now that makes sense. Um, but that was what I kind of got for my my notes, I guess, on on Halloween. And like I said, we're not going to go scene by scene into this thing. So, what other um, what stood out to you? I mean, do you even remember the first time you saw? I don't. I don't distinctly remember the first. I feel like you probably showed me Halloween when we weren't supposed to watch it. I don't remember the first decade time and a half ago. I ever watched it. I probably saw it for the first time oh god i mean so here's the thing when i was a kid i had cool babysitters like my babysitters were shit like like they let us play i used to scare mine video games masks. all night long and we used to watch shit i had a babysitter kevin who used to watch the playboy channel with us like, <laughs> that dude was the shit like i saw That's a whole other type of problem yeah, yeah. Like, i saw boobies can't do I that nowadays i was like you, the key word you said six. was watch with yeah. <laughs> yeah you can't do that anymore he's in jail now but <laughs> sorry not, kevin not, if you to, hear this. not to get weird but you know um i probably watched that movie i don't know god i had to have been seven or eight years old the first time i saw it um, you're right. I'm sure I introduced you to some of this stuff because I was obviously a little bit older, but like not that much. I remember distinctly, I think before high school started, um, AMC, the movie channel. Yes, that might have been. They were somewhat yeah. new and they were doing, and they still do this, I believe. I don't have cable anymore because none of us have cable anymore. Yeah. Uh, but I think they still do their Halloween movie, Mar horror it's, movie marathon. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, oh. yeah, so it just yeah. runs horror movies. Um, and before streaming was a thing, so I know most of you listeners are like babies and you, all you know is streaming. <laughs> so, you know, I just stream That's movies. all we know. Well, before we could stream movies like that, you know, you had to rely on 
channels like AMC. Yeah, to either to buy it, rent it, or see it on TV. Right, or you had to yeah, buy the, the, the TV guide. Right, exactly. You, know. you know, search before, when it was coming on. Yeah. Right, and before you know, <laughs> before I was had a job and could afford to buy my own you know, movies and shit, like I had to find ways to watch them, and I remember that distinctly being also part of what you know allowed me to see more than I had ever seen before. Like I think there were. You know, when you were when we were at least at least when we were kid kids, like you know, you might catch a movie on TV. Like yeah, there might be every a now channel and then. every now and then showing a movie. Because um, think about it, like back when Star Wars got released, like there was no home video. Like it was all TV. You had to see it on TV, movie. or you saw it in the movie theater, right? So like, you know, not to get on a different ex- discussion altogether, but like the first time I had ever watched Star Wars was on a recorded VHS because my dad ripped him from the TV <laughs> yep. on a VHS tape. Yep. So it's the same with these types of movies. Like, and I think I don't know we kind of talked about it a little bit before we started recording. The TV versions of these movies were also a little different too, because mm-hmm. they had to cut certain things for TV. They had to make it a certain length for TV. Mm-hmm. They had to plan for commercials and that sort of thing. So I'm sure, I don't remember exactly the first time I saw it, but I distinctly remember those two things specifically kind of being the sticking point for yeah. when, when I first saw this, it was definitely a mistake. My grandmother used to be <laughs> like the blockbuster of the ghetto. My grandmother loved <laughs> movie people would come knock out and gra- bo- you know bother her for a video. She was babysitting me one day. I was a little. The title said Halloween. It was Halloween time. I'm like, oh, Charlie Brown's Halloween, Scooby Doo Halloween. Yeah. I want to watch something scary. I watched this. <laughs> Petrified me as a child to the point I was scared of everything. But if I heard this music, I ran to the TV. <laughs> like, this scared me to the point I was excited. Yeah. So yeah. I saw it when I definitely should not have seen it. That's scariest thing for me is that he drives. <laughs> yeah, we gotta get into that. Yeah, I love that. that car, I yeah. love your take yeah, on that. Yeah, we'll we'll talk about that soon. Um, yeah, I think I think now that you brought it up, because I might not have remembered the whole AMC stuff, but I just I do remember now is that was a big thing. That's probably where I caught it first. It was either you or AMC, because on Halloween they do the twenty four hour loop, and it's never the same movie too. It's so it's just constantly yeah, yeah, new would, movies. Yeah. And I think I think Halloween, it was like a week Halloween long or night something. they would do the entire Halloween, series. Yeah. They go one Halloween's. through whatever, so we would keep um, that on. But the there was TV. that, and now you say now you say that. But I also remember that back in 04, 2004, and I think I I was like a sophomore in high school at that point. I remember when Bravo did their hundred scariest movie moments, mm. and I had already been a horror junkie at that point, anyways. But this series basically gave me fifty to sixty additional movies that I had either never heard of or I had kind of heard of, but I had never really found a way to watch them. And, you know, gave me reason to go find and seek these movies out. I remember that. It was funny that it was Bravo that Bravo, did that. Bravo yeah. TV. Of all, of all of the all, things. It yeah. was Bravo that I remember yeah. that. And I also remember too distinctly. So we used to go camping as kids. So, you know, what people refer to as glamping. We used to go camping at a campground in a trailer. So we'd have access to a TV and DVD player, or VHS player or whatever at the time. And the, the main store in the campground rented movies. Mm-hmm. And they had Halloween H2O. And I think that was also one of my first exposures to Hattie yeah. Myers because my parents, my parents were strict in a way, but they weren't also strict in other ways. They let us watch movies we probably shouldn't have. It's, it's kind of funny. And I know, Mom, Dad, if you're listening to this, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Where like you were super strict about a lot of things, but you also let us watch Happy Gilmore at like seven. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> where do we draw the line? We were strict, so like you would let me rent the movies like that and bring them home and watch them. Um, it's because they wanted to watch them too. Right, maybe, or just it's like you know, he's, you know, they, you know, they got to learn. They got to learn their limits, and maybe that was a mistake because you got me hooked on something that I've been hooked on now for twenty plus years. But all it takes is the right one, yeah. right? Exactly. So I, I, and depending now we say that I'm not even sure which horror movie it was that got me into the genre. I mean, I think we've talked about it before on the podcast mm-hmm. where things like Goosebumps and Are You Afraid of the Dark as kids yeah, they're, were pretty they're, intense to begin with, so that kind of got me into it. But then those on top books of there, were insane. Yeah. Those books right. were great. So, like, it's scary stories like, to tell in the yeah, dark. I guess it's kind of like drugs. You just need to do harder and harder shit. <laughs> now we're watching shit like Terrifier and fucking, you know, dark, nasty shit to, like, <laughs> feel something. I yeah. don't know. Um, yeah, so I think AMC is constant loop on Halloween because I would always skip school on Halloween. Just to watch TV all day. Yep. And that was kind of yep. that was my shtick for yep. Halloween. I couldn't wait for like the first time I could buy a like a real Michael mask, mm-hmm. not one of the cheap shitty ones, but like you could buy oh, like a cheap, real. Cheap ones are everywhere too. Oh yeah, yeah. I know. Ten bucks spirit yeah, Halloween. Like, well, the, horrible. Yeah. You know, the first time you could buy like that seventy to one hundred dollar yep. real like legitimate mask. Um, and with... then of course when I got older and I started working at Best Buy and I did that for years, I had a a, a team lead or a manager that 
like me loved that stuff he had like all of the shit all of the props and stuff like that like it, it was crazy kind of how at that point it kind of just went downhill for me and at that point and i fell into it hard so yeah so that's that um since we mentioned it, let's get into. We're we gonna talk about the car. Let's yeah, get into the car. I <laughs> can't not talk about. I'm gonna that. let Eric take let's the lead on this one because I love his takes on the I car. Guess, when it comes to Michael Myers, when it comes to all the genres, Freddy, you know Freddy Krueger, the Nightmare on Street, he gets you in your dreams. It's creepy because you sleep. Everyone sleeps, so it's scary. Jason, you can avoid Jason. You don't go to the camp. You don't deal with Jason. You don't play with toys. You don't deal with Chucky. <laughs> Michael can drive to you. <laughs> Half this movie, he's in a car <laughs> driving. It's true. He has to get gas. If he's getting gas, is that? Are you getting gas next to Michael? <laughs> if you're in the in the gas station hey, and Michael's hey. across from you, you're getting unleaded. He's getting premium. Are you having a conversation? Is he look? Is he prepaying? <laughs> This is in the 70s. He had to go in to pay. <laughs> where did he get the, where, where yeah, he get the where money? Where's his money? <laughs> Who's pay? Do you let him take it? Is he going in the store with the mask? Does he take the mask off? Right, and keep in mind before he before he gets before he finds like the tow truck driver and takes his his outfit. He's in a fucking John Johnny like a onesie. Yeah. Like, he, like he's got bare ass like walking into a gas station. He had to have been right. That's I don't, That's that is the scariest thing. This takes place in Haddonfield, Illinois. Or wherever Michael wanted to drive to. Yeah. I, mean, I, I mean, I guess he's a big motherfucker, so you're not like gonna fuck with him. I yeah, guess, like, I just, but I'm it's still ain't free. Gas. If I pull up, and Michael's <laughs> I'm going to the Shell Station on the like street. It, I'm a chance. I'll look at the next one. <laughs> just yeah. Keep on going. This empty should be able to. Yeah, just I don't care how low the gas is. Just keep next riding. One. Next one. Maybe we'll get Michael driving. How about the, the fact that he breaks into a. a, a, a like a hardware store to get his mask. The hardware store is closed on like a Tuesday <laughs> afternoon. Like, like, what, 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 are, what are we talking about? Like, and I do love that scene when they're like, and nobody notices it. Like, yeah. like, 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 like the cops are like, we don't know what happened. We don't know who did this. Like, what happened? It's like there was nobody walking down the street. Nobody this notices is, this. I love when he's just like, he's like yelling because the alarm's going off. He's just like, oh, you know, someone broke in. They only took rope, a mask. Bunch of knives. knives. It's probably <laughs> just kids. kids. Probably just kids. <laughs> kids, kids. Yeah, just kids. <laughs> oh god, there's some. There is some stuff. I, I wish I did take like notes on the actual movie because there are some stuff oh, in so here. That, that, is, that always freaks me out as a kid. That was the scariest part because I'm from New York. I'm from the ghetto. I'm from cities. There's no killers in the cities. Still later on yeah. in like the '90s, they made those type of movies. But these are all suburb killers. And I was little, and I realized that he's driving. He can come to New York. <laughs> he, can, he can go to New York. He can find me. <laughs> Illinois. I'm like, how of Illinois? This is Chicago. That's a city. Chicago is like New York. <laughs> this is what a seven-year-old, eight-year-old was thinking, being petrified of this movie. <laughs> oh, this motherfucker's going to come get me. Yes, he can come to the hood. He can drive. <laughs> oh, Michael so in the hood. Oh, that would have been a I mean, y'all had, great. y'all had Leprechaun in the hood. <laughs> oh, man. But, yeah, this, this movie has its moments, that's for sure. Now, there's, um, there's one funny thing too we didn't mention it which I guess it's you know neither here or there but I think it's funny is that like Jamie Lee Curtis likes to say in a lot of interviews when she's ever talked about the movie is that like shh, it was it was funny to her that John Carpenter wanted her to be like the straight and narrow like the good girl who watched the kids didn't get into trouble and she's like you hired me to do that and then you hired I forget her name but the girl who plays um Linda Linda um you know, they've been this the blonde, right? Yeah, the okay. blonde, and they like to say how, like, you know, in real life, the two of them were swapped. Like Jamie Lee Curtis was the crazy wild, yeah. like, wild one, got drunk, yeah. high, fucking fucked her, you know, all these, all these guys and shit. And that the other girl, I'm blanking on her, the actress's name, but Linda's actor was like completely different. Um, but in this movie, she plays like the straight and narrow. Um, and I think it didn't like I think pretty sure John said that like half the reason he hired her is because she could scream. Yeah. Yeah. She's got like literally the most. I mean, I know this is PJ, probably obvious. PJ Souls. PJ Souls. There you go. PJ Souls, who was also in um, a bunch of movies, or at least a couple. Carrie. Of with she was in Carrie. She was also in Stripes with yep. Bill Murray. Um, another good movie, not a horror. Movie. I would love to see him in some horror movies. Yeah. Really right. Great. Well, he Zombieland. Was, Zombieland. <laughs> yeah, 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 not really. Right. A, sort of, but sort of. Yeah. But Bill would have been a great because now a lot of horror movies have some comedic aspects to yeah. it. Now, if it was done with Bill in his prime, would have been great. Oh yeah. For sure, but um, I thought that was funny, especially like when she's like we just passed the scene. She's driving around with her friend Nancy, and uh, you know they're smoking the roach, <laughs> and like he's like she's like puffing on it, <laughs> like she clearly doesn't know what she's doing. 
But yeah, it's funny. And we get some really good lines too in this movie. Like, you know, everyone's entitled to one good scare. Yeah. Is like iconic. I'm quintessential. Like, everybody yeah. remembers that. Everybody, that, that, that one that line. That's been said a lot since this movie. Right. And yeah. they, you're talking about like you know, how nowadays a lot of horror movies, they have cheap jump scares that are like, meh. This movie showed these directors, today directors, how to make good jump scares. Like, that was a good jump scare. Whether they listened because, to them or not. Right, because you had no idea that was coming. It was like, you know, they're just walking in the street. You don't think about it. It's and building up a little bit with the yeah, music. Yeah, same with John's music placement sound exactly, with those right. jump scenes. It was just so, like, subtle, and then they hit you with it, and but you're not expecting one it. One of the scariest scenes in this movie, it's coming up soon, I believe. When Michael's by the car, he just sits up. What? He would just sit, he was standing next to the car for how long? <laughs> right. He was right. just there. She walks by and he just pops up Oop, from yeah. underneath the car. Was he checking the tire pressure? Yeah. Right. <laughs> He's, right. He likes driving. He was yeah, wanting to check if that car right. was he good to go. Check right. his tire. Tire it's was like, man, is this thing a good one for, uh, can I bring this car to New York yeah, now? Yeah, he, there. Was he was coming to the Bronx. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. This movie is just, it's, it's, it's just proof positive that suspense really works in a horror movie. Mm-hmm. You can't just do, like, the tradi- like, if you do nothing but gore, it's just going to be boring. It's just going to be gross out. It's not scary. It's just like, oh, it's gross. I don't want to watch that. Yeah. Whereas, you know, if, if if it's just jump scares, cheap jump scares, it's just a bunch of shock value. Yeah, you're waiting for the next jump. You're waiting for the next one, right. With this, like, it's actual, like, build up. There's dread. You, you know, it, you get moments of levity, moments to breathe, but then they hit you immediately right after that. And like, it's just... I don't like to say things are perfect because nothing's perfect, but this movie is one of those horror movies that is near so near perfect mm-hmm. that you know nothing will ever top it. No, it's, I guess is my point. it's a classic for a reason. That's why this is you know I hate to say it, but this is like my second <coughs> favorite horror movie of all time. Shining is still number one, but Shining it's the same. But it's the same idea. It's that same like it just builds and builds tension and stress, and it stresses you out the entire time. You're just waiting for something to happen, and when it finally does, it actually pays off. And that's the coolest thing about these movies. And it's a quick in and out, hour and thirty minutes. Yeah, it's, I mean, they didn't didn't waste any time. Like you know, crazy person kills his sister as a kid, goes to, to yep. some simple jail, story, breaks out of jail, whatever you want to call it, drives a car, hops yep. across the, the country, drives home, knows how to get back to his house. <laughs> yeah. How? Mm. Digs up the tombstone. Right. Yep. right. And I think, oh, it must have so, been kids again. What fucking so kids live in this goddamn town? <laughs> I think this kid sucks. I think I think it's is it a deleted scene where Loomis is talking to the guy that kind of heads up the girl. Yeah, Loomis is. Yeah, well. So I think I think it's a deleted scene. That's initially. a TV, that's a TV scene. It's, it's a, a TV, TV scene, scene, right? And he says because he says you know he can't drive, he can't get that far, and then Loomis is like he was doing pretty good last night. Yeah, right. Yeah. And that's exactly how we all felt yeah. in the bodies. And it's like, funny too because he was locked up when he was six. Right. So he's Who's just taught about a drive He's just fucking car? winging it. So well, apparently what they did say about that was that uh, Loomis had driven him there okay. or around right, that and sense, supposedly yeah. he just studied or like right. he just paid so well good attention that he just knows how to drive, knows where to go, yeah, like, knows how to read a map apparently. Cause, right. Yeah, what was my, I want to know what he was reading in no the G- hospital. Like, what was Michael yeah. daily activities? There's no GPS right. to bring and that's, I think I think that's where a lot of people have an issue with like the the zombie version. Is that zombie spent too much time? Yeah, he spent. Way I felt like too half the movie was building up why prison. Michael was the way he was, and I'm one of those that actually kind of enjoyed the first one. Like I liked Zombie's first movie. The first one was good. I just did not like the direction was, of the second one. Yeah, yeah, the second one wasn't great. Was and, and I and I yeah. admit that I, I can kind of see where people have an issue with the beginning of that movie because it is drawn out. It's too much. Like I can, you know, show his p- shithead father. Show there's a reason why he's a he's a bullied little kid and he kills somebody. Like I get that, but then you spend way too much. Way too much time with him and Loomis, yeah. Before he becomes Michael, Michael, yeah. Um, so I, I can see where they're coming from, and then even with the newest Halloween movies, same idea where it's like at least they tried to kind of go back where it was like, don't spend too much time in the beginning. Let's just yeah. get him back in the mask, get him back out, and ha- have unleash him. Thing. Yep. So, yeah, I'm excited to see how this uh, the next one. Did, right. What do you guys think about Halloween Kills? Oh boy, listen. <laughs> while we're I guess while we're talking oh, about newer movies. <laughs> My whole thing for Halloween kills. You kill the whole fire department, man. <laughs> Listen, I know some firefighters. One of them would have hurt Michael. Not he killed them. They all had axes and and poses and he killed nothing. The whole fire department. I can't. I can't. The whole did not. There wasn't a single survivor what of is it, the fire did department. Did they did they chant "Evil Never Dies" like a million times? Is that what the, is that the thing they say over and over I, again? Or "Evil Dies Tonight." Evil, Evil dies, dies tonight. tonight. Yeah. It was something like that. So, don't hate me, audience. I get it. Like. I wasn't a fan of Halloween. So I, I didn't like that movie. At I didn't all. love it. I did just rewatch it. it. Um, but man, it was funny how they just bring it. back like 
Tommy, and he gets the power of the whole town to just I know straight up murder Wait, somebody. Listen, where Sorry. was that during all that? I always joked around about that. I'm like, I feel like the town should come together and hunt him as a group. Just get everyone together. They did that horribly, though. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's just like, I need some big, strong men. You, here, guys, we're hunting this guy. You call me. It's like the fucking ringleader, Tommy, yeah. over here. And Tommy was with school teachers, a couple janitors. Like, <laughs> yeah. there was nothing with two. A sheriffs. doctor dressed up as a doctor. After all those kills, you know they would have had a police department in that town, ready, ready to go. go. Yeah. Let me just put it this way: SWAT team on I, dial. I would rather watch Resurrection than Halloween Kills again. Yeah, I but, just like the firefighter scene, which is so. I love my. I mean, Michael the crazy Wayne. thing is, is like with those, these are the two new ones. Like the Halloween, the, the new Halloween is good. I didn't, I, I enjoyed it. Halloween Kills was, but the, 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 the filming of it, like the actual technical yeah. behind it is really good. <clears throat> um, it's shot unbelievable. And of course it is because it's, you know, shot with a bigger budget. Yeah. Um, and I think they tried their best to not go overboard, mm-hmm. but it just unfortunately being that it's 2021, 2022. They kind of. Do automatically, yeah. like some of the. Sh- I hated the the car door scene with the gun, like that. When yeah. that happened, I was like, I'm out. I'm of done. course, of I'm course, I'm done. I'm out yeah. of this already. Like I'm done. Like what? Like really? And I get I it. Think that was a that was going that was going as a great scene till that part of so the scene. So that exactly yeah. specific, yeah, to that specific part. And why was the nurse there? Like, what does she have to do with it? I like, uh, who knows. <laughs> Yeah, the nerd. Well, yeah, the I had, wanna, I the old like, nerd, because by that time she's old. old. Right, yeah. Right. What is she gonna do? Right. It was for Loomis. Is though. she gonna knit Michael a sweater to death? <laughs> <laughs> Stab her with a fucking. Oh, There's crochet needles. Yeah. I uh, didn't want to get us on that discussion. I though. figured while we were there, we might as well yeah. hit on it. So, <laughs> Halloween '78 as a house. So this was done at uh, 24. This was in a sprung tent. We had talked about this when it and got announced there, originally. So I'm excited to see this one. Um. So what are we expecting from this house? So. Well, we know that you remember the last one, right? So I, I didn't go through. That was the year before I started, because um, I did twenty five, but twenty four. I remember watching videos. It was very. It was cool because it was out at one of the sprung tents, but yes. they had the whole Myers house out there. Mm-hmm. So you walk in through it, and you get the the big scenes. And they had stated at Spooky Empire that um, it's going to have similar scenes, but it's also going to have new scenes, and it's going to be in a. I don't know if they confirmed that, but I think what we were. Led to believe well, now is going, it's going to be in one of the sound stages, so yeah, much yeah, bigger going, area by, to play with. By the there, there map. was a lot of Michaels in the house when you walked around, and there was one part where they had a lot of mirrors, so you didn't know what he was not looking at you. Mm-hmm. He was going in different directions, like away from you. So you were going toward him, and he's going in opposite Opposites. directions. You didn't know it was a mirror. You didn't know who was in there, what you were going against. Yeah, because the way that they did it, and there was. Actually, there were more Dr. Loomis's in the house than my <laughs> Your whole tour through the, the house, not all well, the maze or whatever it is. It's not a maze, it's the house. Yeah. The Loomis is almost side by side with you. Gotcha. Kind of guiding you so you don't know where the, you didn't know where the jumps were coming from in there. So it was actually really cool. Because mm-hmm. as Loomis is talking, things are happening around you. So you were focusing on Loomis when Michael's to your right. Yeah. Popping out and things like that. Pull your, pull your direction one yeah, way and they, get they, you from the made, other end. They made it so that Loomis was part of your party, which is pretty cool. Yeah. But but, I, but but I mean, confirming that they are gonna do kind of their own thing with it. I mean, do you have any ideas as to like, or either of you have any ideas as to what you think they're probably gonna do with it? I I I, I didn't get to do it. I never watched yeah. videos of the original. I'm kind of going trying to go into this blind. Yeah. Like I want to try to experience this for the first time, like without really seeing anything. Mm-hmm. Um, and when they say like they're gonna do their own thing, what I'm thinking is that they're gonna follow the spirit of the movie, but they're also gonna try to change up. It a little bit mm-hmm. and it's cool that they got the I think that it's cool that they got the idea to, like the okay to do that like yeah. they're allowing them the freedom to kind of go in their own direction with mm-hmm. it so I don't know if you had any ideas what you think yeah I don't know I or... what I do hope is like I love the whole walking up to the, the house thing and I think I mentioned this before but I hope well, there's have an, to do the facade but right? I hope there's an exterior shot of us walking I hope we're walking down a sidewalk yeah and yes. Michael's yeah. at the end and then goes behind the bush and that's it yeah. there's no scare I don't want it to be him jumping just... I want him to be walking like there and then back yeah. back in. And then from there you can take like a left or a right and go up to the house itself. Yeah. Um, I think it will probably primarily, again, I mean, the movie does primarily take in place into just the house. Correct. So it's yeah. it's hard to really add different situations. I mean, maybe, maybe we get the, a scene of like the patients all walking out. 
Maybe so that's like the intro. Maybe Payson's up around the house. Maybe like right. maybe like the intro is like yeah like we're in that rainy scene, yeah. and the intro is you know some characters walking around and the psych ward stuff and one person just yelling out about how Michael's gone or whatever and then we walk you know we kind of almost transition from there to Haddonfield and that's like the intro to the house. Um, you had a, a fun idea that I thought would be kind of cool. Yeah, I would like to see as you go into the house since we're going into Michael's house. The beginning of it, like the beginning of the movie, but the actors in there, the scare, the scare actors in it, to be scared of us, not letting us know that they think we're Michael. Mm-hmm. So instead of them trying to jump at us, they're petrified of us. They're screaming, running from us as we're the shapes. I think that would be cool. That's nothing that's ever been done in any horror. House. I like that. Maybe yeah. the actors in there petrified of the visitors yeah. coming for them. That'd be kind of cool. I don't know if they'll like, do it, but that'd be great. I mean, and, and, and yeah, I think, I think there's unique ways that could make scares for us even during that scene. Yeah. Like there's ways they can use sound and other types of sensory type of thing to give you the same type of fully a gotcha type scares. Mm-hmm. Um, but in reverse. But in reverse, right? Yeah, I think that's that's a cool idea. Yeah, I like that. I mean, we're definitely gonna see a lot of the the house scenes, some Tommy actors, hopefully. Yeah. Obviously, you're gonna have your Loomis and Jamie Lee's, but uh, I'd be curious to see the true difference um and it'll be fun for you to go back after once you go through this house and then watch the to original. watch the 24 yeah. one and see like what was actually added upon taken out You're right redone yeah. scrapped the completely sound was amazing in the first one I, mm-hmm. on that. I mean very few houses i've done that the sound quality was great mm-hmm. everything was like you were in the actual movie all the scores the music the sound of the blade getting into things, you heard that mm, yeah. as they were moving in motion. So it was yeah. pretty cool. Oh, and that was another little behind the scenes thing too. The sound of the knife, the stabbing, yep. that was done from them stabbing a watermelon. They, they stabbed a watermelon, took the sound, and used that for killing scenes. You know that's still killing true for the movies now, so they just use different fruits. Is it? Watermelon, pumpkins, they just kind of loads up all... All the Halloween have kept that one true thing because they love the way it sounds. It's yeah. I mean, it's it iconic to them. I don't know how you're gonna get it better, don't, really. Don't don't change what works. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, that's really all I got for this episode right now. Though we talked a lot about the Halloween behind the scenes, going about the, the house. Yeah. I'm just excited. Uh, I'm I mean, excited. we're excited. Um, we're a couple days away at this point. I mean, at this yeah. Well, well when a couple weeks from here, but when you're listening, like less days than that. So no, I I I I'm pumped because, like I said before, like. I'm. I at least have the, I have the uh, luxury of not knowing. Yeah. And I think a lot of people unfortunately don't because they either did it in 24 or mm-hmm. they've watched things from 24 or they've done other houses that are based on the Michael story. Um, but I'm first time I've ever got to experience Universal level on Halloween. Yeah. So uh, for Halloween, anyways. Um, so yeah, I'm excited. I still don't think it's my top hype. We haven't done our hype list yet, so we'll get there. But um, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm pumped. Like I said. One of my favorite movies of all time, so can't hurt to yeah, right. No, can't I mean, hurt to experience it in real life. You said the Shining was your favorite, right? It is my Have favorite. Have they done Shining? House? They did. Yeah, yeah. Yep. yeah. Yep. Another one I haven't done. <laughs> I'm I'd be surprised um, if we didn't see that come back as well because that's a heavy hitter. Horror movie theme one again. Just yeah. Do ten houses based on ten Just, favorite. Ten yeah. Ten yeah. Yeah. I mean that. So it, well. that would be the one. I think the one time where if they did like ten straight IPs. I would be excited for that. As long as they had that all heavy hitters. The one with Freddy, Jason, Chainsaw, Chucky, was that all IVs? It was, wasn't it? They did a year where it was was a lot like that, that. yeah. They had, that was Freddy, Michael, Jason. Yeah. They each had their own thing going. Unfortunately, nowadays, because they know their originals are so popular, you probably won't have that happen, but you're right. I mean, if they just did a year where, like, give give me five IPs or ten IPs that are all just... The heavy Slasher heavy. icons are just Dual heavy versus. Yeah. yeah. Another, I want Jack Freddy versus Jason, Jason again. Like, do you know Jack bring all his... One guys? house, each each house would be a different icon versus a... That'd be cool. Oh, yeah, that's that's an episode idea. idea. Well, we yeah. won't dive in on that because we'll, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> we'll, we'll get that going for us. Coming soon. Yeah. yeah we'll, whole, maybe we'll change our schedule itself. this week. And well, thanks that for the invite, guys. I appreciate oh, it. Of course. It's been a long thanks time coming. Um, but I guess... Um, We'll be back tomorrow, so you don't have to wait long for another yeah. Fear and Beer this episode. This is confusing, because we're recording this like two weeks ahead of time you're listening and to And out of schedule. I'm not trying to break them. We're, we're like the magic. Halloween production right now. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so tomorrow... Will be our... We'll be recording another episode, or is this this... We've already recorded. 
So tomorrow, I'm Sunday, so August 28th, will be our fantasy draft episode. Oh, yes. Yes. So that'll be a fun one. We haven't recorded that yet, have we? Oh, we have. We, okay, have well, we? I don't know. We I, don't know. You'll see. You'll have but to listen it'll to be it. Out, it'll be out tomorrow. But until next time, this is Nick. This is Seamus. And Diaz. <laughs> Happy haunts. We'll see you tomorrow. dun 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 You know, it's Halloween. And again, I would just like to thank Vampire Stepdad for letting us use his music for our intro and outro music. So if you would, just go check him out. Spotify, Facebook. Again, that is Vampire Stepdad.